Shalom. I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahabushai, Bahashem, Rakha Kodash. I want to give double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone because those are the men who I learned this truth from through the spirit and power of Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahabushai. Yahweh is the true name of the God of Israel. Yahabushai is who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. But his one and only true name is Yahabashai. And um, pretty much this video is going to be about um, the recent debate with um, Vocab Malone and um, this camp, this Hebrew Israelite camp. I guess they go by, um, let me see real quick. They go by Wake Up Israel, all right? In which, um, you know, I was watching the elder brothers from London. Uh, require Quam and um, he was making good points you know these guys they could have defended the gospel better you know they could have brought out more edification you know when you out on the highways and byways this is not like a popularity thing like you're not just out there just to be out there like you know you got people that they watch Hebrew Israelite camps and they think it's just easy to go out on the highways and byways you know they don't understand that being in this truth you're going to suffer you know the world's going to come against you but more importantly you have to defend the gospel and in defending the gospel you got to know the breakdowns all right you got to know the breakdowns you got to understand what the gospel is in order to defend it so you got a lot of dudes that they don't study you know they don't study and really they don't even know the basics you know, they don't know the basics. And this is why certain videos you have um, Christians and other anti-Messiah spirits, you know, that confound individuals like that. So, um, you know, pretty much vocab, you know, he, he's, um, you know, he's sent by whoever he's sent from, you know. But um, just check this out. All right. Check this out. Israelites or the Christians? So you're Israelite. That's right. Wait, okay, so now I'm perfect. Perfect, you're Israelite. Now I'm perfect. Say I'm Israelite. Spiritually. Spiritually yeah, yeah. Israelite. Sister, you got two minutes for the word of God. Two minutes for the word of God. Let me ask you one question. Let me ask you one question. What's your nationality? You know where the Israelites according to the Bible. Desmond Decker had a song called the Israelites. Israelites. Israelites are the Christians. So you're Israelite. That's right. Wait, okay, so now I'm perfect. Perfect, you're Israelite. Now I'm Alright, so you hear that? So here we go again. And you know this topic of like Galatians the third chapter comes up pretty much every year or two. Alright? But um you need to understand when you read the scriptures, the most high, the God of Israel, he's literally called the God of Israel. He's only dealing with the seed of Israel. Alright? Which are who? The so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native American Indians. We link up with Genesis, the 49th chapter, all right, Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter, and all the prophecies concerning the Israelites. We are the biblical Israelites, the seed line of the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native American Indians. All people on the planet Earth come from the sperm, which is the seed of a man that grows within a woman, and she conceives that man's seed. That child's nationality is determined by the seed of the father, all right? So us as the Israelites, we are the heavenly father's chosen people that he made the old and new covenant with. We're the people whom Yahabashai, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ and other names, his blood pertains to us. We are under the new covenant, all right? Not in the new covenant right now, but as far as the new covenant is concerned, we're the seed line who he made the old and new covenant with. So you don't get confused, all right? Which begins with the elect of the nation of Israel. And we won't fully be in that new covenant until we are changed, when we can keep the laws perfectly, all right? So, um, you know, let's get into the lesson. So just understand, you cannot be a spiritual Israelite. You have to be a direct descendant of an Israelite, all right? And it's not just about being an Israelite. It's about being a part of the elect of the nation of Israel. All right. So first, let's tackle who the original Christians are. First and foremost, the original Christians or in the Hebrew, the Hamashiachim, right, 
or who? The Israelites, all right? So the original Christians that you read about in the New Testament, they all were Israelites, all right? So-called Negroes, you know, Hispanics, Native American Indians. And we're going to tackle this name Jesus as well briefly. So this is um, 2 Corinthians 11 and 4. It says, for if he that cometh preacheth another. Now the word Jesus is there. But when you go into Strong G 22, um, Strong G 24, 24. All right. The word Jesus, which before the letter J, they was calling him Jesus. Right. Now the Hebrew origin of the word Jesus is what? Yahawashai. So this is why when you're watching Great Millstone videos, we swamp out the word Jesus with Yahabashai when we're reading the scriptures because that's the Messiah's true name. That's what the disciples was defending. All right. When they was defending the gospel, they was defending the gospel in the name of Yahabashai, not Jesus. The word Jesus didn't exist back then. All right. So understand that. Every time you see the word Jesus in the New Testament, the word that should technically be there is the Hebrew origin, Strong's H3091, which is Yehabashai. All right. So now let's jump back. So it says, for if he that cometh preacheth another Yehabashai, right? And you got a lot of that that's going on, you know, outside of Great Millstone. You got guys that incorporate Roman Catholicism with being a Hebrew Israelite. That's not the truth no more. They're not teaching in the name of Yahweh and Yahweh Shai. They're not teaching our people about Jacob's trouble, the hour of temptation, what the mark of the beast is. You got Israelites that don't even believe in the New Testament. The Lord is only dealing with the elect of the nation of Israel through the blood and sacrifice of Yahweh Shai. All right? You need to understand that. When you come into this truth, this truth is only meant for the elect of the nation of Israel to receive or the Israel of God, right? It says, whom we have not preached. So we have the examples pursuant to 2 Timothy, um, the third chapter, the 14th verse. We have to be assured of the things we learn so that when we're faced with false prophets, people that think they know the Bible, men like Volcan Malone, we have to be assured of the things we learn. In order to defend the gospel. So you got a lot of men that don't even know the basics. It says. Whom when we have not preached. Or if you receive another spirit. So if, you, if you're not teaching in the name of. Then you're teaching and coming in another spirit. Alright. Even if you say you're an Israelite. You got a garment on. If you're teaching in the name of most high and Christ blessed. And I hate hearing that. All right. It, it like irked my spirit when I hit it. But if you teaching in those names and you're not giving all praise, honor and glory to Yahweh and Yahweh Shai through the Holy Spirit, then you're coming in another spirit. Continuing on, it says, which ye have not received because we ain't received those names. The scriptures say what? In John, the 10th chapter, my sheep hear my voice and they follow me and I know them. Right. So we're not going to hear Most High in Christ bless or, or Jesus or any other false name like Yahshua, English names, right? Aramaic, whatever the hell. The names of the Heavenly Father is Yahweh and his only begotten son name is Yahweh Shai. That's the name that he wants the elect of the nation of Israel, ultimately all Israel, to pray to and believe on and have faith upon in those two names through the Holy Spirit. Continuing on. It says, or oh, another gospel. So with the gospel, it comes with names. All right. The name of Yahweh and Yahweh Shai. It says, which ye have not accepted, ye might well bear with them. So now check this out. Right. So this is what Apostle Gabal always brings out. And I'm going to start bringing this out more often because this is cut through. All right. So the. um. The word Christian or the Christians, when you go into the secular history, were followers of Serapis Christi's. And this needs to get brought out all the time now. It says in Alexandria, right? Alexandria, Egypt, because you had communities of Israelites that was in Alexand um, Alexandria, Egypt, all throughout Egypt. Even when you read um, Matthew, the second chapter, when Herod 
he was um, killing all the sons of Israel to try to stop the birth of Yahabashai. All right, Joseph and Mary, they fled into Egypt. Why? Because you had communities of Israelites that was dwelling in Egypt. All right. So it says in Alexandria, Egypt, he relates there, those who worship Serapis are in fact Christians and those who call themselves bishops of Christ are in fact devotees of Serapis. All right. So this deity, which was Ptolemy Philadelphus II, right? Ptolemy Soda's son, he was worshipped as a god, all right? And that god was Serapis Christis. And the followers of Serapis Christis or Christos were who? Christians, all right? So you can see how history repeats itself pursuant to Ecclesiastes, the first chapter. So when you're using these names, you got to understand the origin of the names. Why do you identify as this? Why is this called this? You got to question shit. You can't just be saying I'm a Christian and you don't know what the word Christian mean. Now, text wise, the Christians were Israelites. When you read the scriptures, all right, they were followers of the Messiah. But the way how you would say in the Hebrew is Hamashiachim, all right, the followers of the anointed. That's how you would say it. So now, check this out. Now, this is a person that wrote some type of blog. They got good information, and I've verified what I'm about to read. All right? So I'm just going to read this. It says, um, yep. It is important to understand names, translations. For example, in Hebrew, which is the native language of the Israelites, the Messiah's name, right? He only got one name, not names, was Yehoshua. Right? And that name right there, Yehoshua, that's not his name. His only name is Yehoshua. Continuing on, though, it's the point. It says, but the Messiah's name in English is Jesus Christ. But now the Messiah only has one name that's found in the ancient Paleo Hebrew, which is Yehoshua. It says, yep. So this name, Jesus Christ, which came into the unauthorized King James Version Bible by Benjamin. Blaney, all right, which is an Edomite, in the year 1789, which he also took out of the Bible, the Apocrypha, out of the King James Version Bible. This time is when the Jesuits or the Roman Catholic Church were in power in Italy. The letter J was introduced into the vocabulary in the year 1524. So this is why I read 2 Corinthians 11 and 4, for he that come and preacheth another messiah pretty much all right coming in a different spirit so if you're not as an israelite right that's professing yourself to be a prophet or a preacher which is pretty much the same thing right a teacher of the law you know a teacher of yahweh's teachings right if you're not coming in the name of yahweh and yahweh through the holy spirit then you're coming in another spirit so guys like Volcab Malone, they're coming in another spirit, making them what? Antichrist, anti-Messiahs. Continue on. It says, um, yep, Benjamin Blaney was not authorized to put the letter J in front of the name Jesus or Sus that was in the Bible, thus turning the name Jesus or Sus into Jesus, which is being used today. He was not authorized to make the changes to the King James Bible because King James was already dead and Benjamin Blaney made changes to the King James Bible over 150 years. It says after King James death. All right. So there you go. So you got people that just want to debate, but they don't even know what the hell they really believe in. So now let's get this. Let's see who the original Christians are, right? To prove that they were Israelites. This is Acts chapter 13, and verse 1. It says, Now they were in the church. They were in the church that was at Antioch, certain prophets and teachers as Barnabas and Simeon, that was called Niger, and Lucius of Cyrene, and Manian which had been brought up with Herod, the Tetrarch, and Saul. Now, check this out, right? Now, you see the word Niger is there. When you go into this word Niger, you see the word that they got there. Matter of fact, I'll let it play.
Strong's G 3526. Niger. Niger. All right. And it says what? Pretty much means black, right? Now, let's read that in the NLT. To let you know that the followers of the Messiah, they were dark skinned men. The Israelites are dark skinned. The original Christians, which are the Hamashiachim, right? They were people of color. They were Israelites. Acts 13 and 1 in the NLT. It says, among the prophets and teachers of the church at Antioch of Syria were Barnabas um, Simeon called the black man. Oh, check that out. It says um, Lucius from Cyrene and then so forth and so on. All right. But the point is, it says what? Called the black man, Niger. So there you go. That's who the original Christians were. Now, let's get this. This is Acts 11 and 19. And this is dealing with the church at Antioch. It says, Now they which were scattered abroad. Now who was scattered abroad pursuant to Deuteronomy 28 and 64? The Israelites. We were scattered because we broke the law, statutes, and commandments, which resulted in curses being put upon the sea line of Jacob. Like us being scattered, all right, going into captivity, dealing with 70 AD. Dealing with the abomination of desolation. We got to serve our enemies for the one of all things. Being called all these racist and prejudiced um, bywords to humiliate us, right? All these humiliating titles. Our woman coming against us. Us being kicked out of our land, so forth and so on. To the point where we couldn't prosper. Why is that? Because we broke the old covenant. Which is why we needed Yahabashai to be that perfect sacrifice for us. To adopt us back. To the heavenly father through Yahabashah's blood and sacrifice. All right. Continue on. Um, Acts 11, 19. Now they which were scattered abroad upon the persecution that arose about Stephen traveled as far as Phoenice and, and Cyprus and Antioch, preaching the word to none but unto the Jews only. And this is the same thing we doing now. All right. We tell you that what salvation is only for the Israelites, but more importantly, the elect of the nation of Israel. When we do these videos, these videos are for the Jews only. All right. It's, it's only for the 12 tribes of Israel, the so-called blacks, Hispanics and Native American Indians. And the heathen, they have no part in this. It's just like in Ezra, the fourth chapter concerning the building of the second temple. You had the heathens. They was like, oh, let us come build with you. No, you can't build with us. This is our heritage. The Heavenly Father is not dealing with the heathen nations. The heathen nations have no part in our inheritance or the building of this spiritual temple, which is the third temple. All right. So it says the word to none but unto the Jews only. And some of them were men of, of Cyprus and Cyrene, which when they will come to Antioch, Spake unto the Grecians. Now, when you go into this word Grecians, right? Let's let the word play. Strong's G, 1675. Hellenistes. taste. Yep. Let's go down here. What does it say? A Greek-speaking Jew. That's who the Gentiles were in the New Testament. All right? Greek-speaking Jews. Whenever you see, you know, um, like Romans, the 10th chapter, Galatians, the 3rd chapter, for an example... Where it mentions Jew, no Greek. All right. The Greeks were what? Greek speaking Jews. Israelites that was Hellenized during the Greek captivity. Continuing on, it says a Hellenist. Right now, somebody that's a Hellenist, they're keeping Greek customs. They was Hellenized under Alexander the Great. First and foremost, his four generals. All right. So you have men out of the Seleucus line. By the name of Antiochus Epiphanes, that when you read First Maccabees, the first chapter, he made a decree throughout all his empire, all throughout the Seleucid um, Empire, that we couldn't keep the Torah, we couldn't keep the law, statutes, and commandments, couldn't keep the Sabbaths, high holy days, couldn't circumcise our children, and we had to keep the customs of the Greeks, right? Going to the gym, you know, working out naked, just doing all manner of wickedness. So you had Israelites during the Roman Empire now because the Greek Empire got amalgamated into the Roman Empire, right? That they were still in that Gentile state of mind. 
And that's why you have scriptures like in Corinthians where it says that in time past, ye were Gentiles carried away by these dumb idols. All right. If they was already um, Gentiles, why would it say that? No, it's talking about Israelites that was in a Gentile state of mind from the previous captivity and that captivity. All right. So it says one who imitates the manners and customs or the worship of the Greeks. This is what the men of the law was dealing with in the New Testament. All right. The Gentiles in the New Testament that started their faith upon Yahweh and Yahweh Shai through the hearing of this word. Those were Israelites. It's just like now. Now the modern day Hellenization is what? Being Westernized. All right. Following the ways of America. Continuing on, it says, um, in the use of the Greek tongue, because they were speaking Greek, all right? Greek-speaking Jews, that's who the Grecians were. It says, used in the New Testament of Jews born in foreign lands and speaking Greek. So there you go. Just because you see a verse is neither Jew nor Greek, you can't just apply that to everybody, because that will make the Most High a liar. When you read Psalms, the 89th chapter, he says what? My covenant will I not break nor alter the thing that is gone out of my lips. The Most High is not a man that he shall lie. Who, who is a part of the seed of the promise? Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob only. Not no, not no heathen. All right? The heathens are not a part of the seed of the promise. The fathers of the promise is only Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Not any other man. All right. Continuing on. Acts 11 and 20. It says, And some of them were men of Cyprus and Cyrene, which when they were come to Antioch, spake unto the Grecians, Greek-speaking Israelites or Jews, preaching the Lord Yehoboshai. All right. Yehoboshai. That's his name. So there you go. And the hand of the Lord was with them. And a great number believed and turned unto the Lord. All right. So there you go. So the original Christians were Israelites. It's just that simple. See, modern day Christianity, this is a man-made religion that comes from the Roman Catholic Church. Now, concerning Galatians, the third chapter, right? Who was Paul talking to? Well, we got to go back to Galatians, the first chapter. This is Galatians, the first chapter. And let's just start at verse 1. It says, Paul, an apostle, not of men, neither by man, but by Yehoshua Mashiach and the Most High of the Father, or Yehovah the Father, who raised him from the dead. And we read on um, Acts the ninth chapter, all right? Yehoshua came to Paul and, and taught Paul. So Paul is a chosen vessel. He's a part of the elect to what? Teach the nation of Israel to minister unto the saints. Majority of the New Testament is a Apostle Paul's epistles, his letters. All right. And he taught the law. Continuing on, it says, and all the brethren, who is Paul's brethren? Pursuant to Romans, the ninth chapter, his kinsmen, according to the flesh, who are what? Israelites. That's who his brethren is. Which are with me unto the churches of Galatia. Now, when you go into this word churches, right? The word there is ecclesia. And let's go down here. What does it say? Number two, the assembly of the Israelites. That's who the original Christians were and still are. Israelites, the original followers of the Messiah. Okay? So there you go. That's all I need to read out of that. So that's, that's who Galatians, the third chapter, is talking about. It says... And all the brethren which are with me unto the churches of Galatia, right? Then the Israelites that was inhabiting Galatia. Grace be to you and peace from Yahweh the Father and from our Lord Yahweh Hamashiach. All right? You can see Galatia on the map. See? There you go. So now. Let's go to Galatians third chapter. So before you even read Galatians the third chapter, you got to understand the context of it is talking about Israelites. You got to understand the history and ultimately you got to just learn from Great Millstone. You got to learn from the apostles of Great Millstone on down. 
through the Holy Spirit. Now, let's start up. This is Galatians, the third chapter, and verse one. It says, "O foolish Galatians!" Now, the Galatians that is referring to is who Israelites, who have bewitched you that ye should not obey the truth, before whose eyes Yahweh Mashiach have evidently set forth crucified among you. So let me see. All right, let me just get to the point. Let's get to the point. All right, this is Galatians chapter 3, and let's start at verse, hmm, I'll start at verse 21, Galatians 3, 21 on down, it says, is the Lord then against the promises of the Most High, the Most High forbid, for if there had been a law given, which could have given life, verily righteousness should have been by the law. But the scripture have concluded all are under sin. Yeah, so all these guys are talking about, oh, I keep the law. I'm, I'm perfect. Keep the commandments. Nah, the, the main message of the gospel is to have faith upon Yahabashah. That's what's going to lead to righteousness. Because under the new covenant, once we receive salvation, we're going to be changed and put in spiritual bodies. All right, extraterrestrial bodies to where we can keep the law perfectly. And the ones that's going to be a part of the elect, the ones that's going to be a part of that first resurrection is the ones that have faith in Hamashiach Yehoshai. All right. So this is what the apostles and the disciples, this is what they was teaching. That's what's going to lead to righteousness and, and keeping the Lord perfectly. Your faith in Hamashiach Yehoshai, your fear of Yehoshai. All right. And Yehoshai. So it says, yep. That the promise, because the scriptures say what? You you break one law, you break them all. So we need Yahabashah. We're in debt to Yahabashah, right? It says that the promise by faith of Yahabashah Mashiach might be given to them, the elect of the nation of Israel, that believe. And those are going to be the ones that's going to be a part of the first resurrection, the elect. The ones that have faith in Yahabashah, the ones that don't bow down to this man's new world order system and receive his M-A-R-K, which is the RFID chip implant. That's the mark of the beast. All right. Continuing on, it says, but before faith came, we were kept under the law, shut up unto the faith, which should afterwards be revealed. Wherefore, the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Hamashiach that we might be justified by faith. Exactly. It says, but after the faith, after, but after that faith is come, we are no longer under a schoolmaster. And let's read that in the NLT real quick, right? Galatians 3 and 24, it says, let me put it another way. The Lord was our guardian until Hamashiach came. It protected us until we could be made right with the Most High through faith. Because everything we're going through, right, is really to exalt Yahabashai, to exalt Yahweh and Yahabashai. All right? Continuing on. So it says, verse 25, NLT, And now that the way of faith has come, we are no longer, we no longer need the law as our guardian. Because ultimately concerning the Levitical priesthood, you know, um, the old covenant, that was a shadow of things to come because through Yahabashai, who's a, the mediator of a better covenant, now we're going to be able to keep the law, statutes, and commandments perfectly from the point of receiving salvation and to the future in the kingdom. All right? So Yahabashai, he's the better mediator of a better covenant established upon better promises to where the Most High, he's going to give us a clean slate and he's going to forgive us. Right? So now, let's jump back to the KJV. It says, 26, For ye are all the children of the Most High by faith in Hamashiach Yehoshua. For as many of you as have been baptized, and what's the true baptism? The renewing of your mind by the washing of this word. That's why the scriptures say what? Out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. Because you have to digest these breakdowns. You have to digest this gospel, you know, you have to be fully persuaded 
in your own mind. All of this is synonymous with the belly, all right? Storing the knowledge in your mind, the living water. So it says, into Hamashiach have put on Hamashiach. Now, here we go. It says, there is neither Jew nor Greek. So Christians just love running with this, and they like to say that this applies to everybody. Now, let's go into the word Greek. Strong's G, 1672, Helene. 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 Helene for the word Greek, right? And it says what? A Greek either by nationality, whether a native of the mainland or of the Greek islands or colonies. Oh, check this out. It says, in a wider sense, the name embraces all nations, not Jews, that made the language, customs, and learning of the Greeks their own. And that's what it's talking about. All right. It's talking about the Grecians, the Greek speaking Israelites that was keeping the, the customs of the Greeks from the previous captivity, which was the Greek Empire. Right. It says the primary reference to a difference of religion and worship. So you had Israelites that was in a Gentile state of mind. So continuing on. So it says Jew, no Greek. It's talking about Israelites. It's talking about. The circumcision, Israelites that knew that they were Israelites, and then the uncircumcision, which is the Greek, that needed to be put back in remembrance of who they are and to repent out of that so that they can become a proselyte, you know, a new believer, and convert back to Yahweh through Yahabashai, through the prophets preaching unto them, right? So it says, there is neither bond nor free, there is neither male nor female, for ye are all one in Hamashiach Yehabashah. Yeah, because it's the same nation. It's just that simple. All the Most High wants us to do is have faith upon His Son, all right? And He'll forgive us, and we keep the faith unto the end. And if ye be Hamashiachs, then are ye Abraham's seed. Because what made Abraham righteous? His faith, right? That's what made him righteous, his faith. It says, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. All right. Because who are the fathers of the promise? Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. Out of Abraham came Isaac and out of Isaac, the Lord was dealing with Jacob. Jacob's name was changed to Israel. The Israelites are the so-called blacks, Hispanics and Native American Indians. Before we came into this truth, we was in a Gentile state of mind. All right. Now that we have Yehabashah Mashiach and we're put back in remembrance and we're remembering ourselves in the land of our captivity, now what makes us righteous and wise unto salvation? Faith. All right. So that was the last scripture, but I got one more. This is on 2 Timothy. I think it's the third chapter. Yep. 2 Timothy. I'm going to start at 14. 2 Timothy 3 and 14, but continue thou in the things which thou has learnt and has been assured of. So you have to be assured of this gospel, all right? It says, knowing of whom thou has learnt them. And we learn from the apostles of Great Millstone. You have to defend the gospel unto death. So those guys, they didn't really do a good job. Verse 15, and that from a child, right? What did Yehobashah tell Nicodemus in St. John the third chapter? You got to be like a child in your mind, meaning you have to learn all over again because that's what a child does. When a child is growing up, it has to learn the examples from their parents. So who is our spiritual parents that begot us through faith? The apostles of Great Millstone on down. All right. So it says, knowing of whom thou has learned them. And that from a child, thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith, which is in Hamashiach Yehavashah, which applies to the Jew and the Greek. All right. The Israelites that knew that they was Israelites, they was brought up in Judea. Right. They, they knew who they were. And it also applies to the Israelites that was in a Gentile state of mind that repent and come back to Yehavah. By having faith on Yehoshua and worshiping them both. All right. That's what's going to make you wise unto salvation through faith, which is in Yehoshua and Mashiach. So that's why Galatians, the third chapter says there's neither Jew nor Greek, because it's talking about the same seed line. 